Welcome back to the final part of Britain's Finest Actresses. We've now seen nine of our ten actresses. A dazzling display of achievement in all aspects of the art. We've witnessed the intense commitment of Vanessa Redgrave. Deborah Carr's refined beauty. The passion of Peggy Ashcroft. Elizabeth Taylor's consummate screen acting and the fragile glamour of Vivian Lee. There's the sensual dynamism of Helen Mirren. Maggie Smith's singular blend of tragedy and comedy. The unforgettable style of Audrey Hepburn. And Julie Walters' inspired naturalism. But the one quality these actresses share is the ability to move us on the deepest human level, drawing us back again and again to the theatre and to the cinema. So it's fitting that the actress you voted as your favourite is one who has not only achieved distinction across the board, but has also become a guarantee of box office success on stage and screen. Uh, number one is Judy Dench. There's no question that I would put Judy Dench number one. If you watch people interviewed, not actors, just regular folk, about Judy, they, they, they don't say, oh, what an actress, they say, oh, I love her. I love Judy Dench. <laughs> we love Judy Dench. I have, a, I have a problem with Judy Dench, and the problem is that I'm in love with her. They, they love what she stands for, they recognize this thing. This, this light shining from within, this pulse, seems to get to people and it's a wonderful thing. What makes Britain great? Yes, good yes. 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 character actress. Her ability to empathise with other people in life is something she carries on into, into her art and that's rather rare. Starring with Judy Dench and Mrs. Brown, Billy Connolly felt like he was getting a free acting lesson. There was um, a scene in it where we we'd had to do the eight some real. The room was full of people and we're all eight something merrily, you know. And I was opposite her and, we're, and and she was smiling over at me and I was smiling back. And I thought, oh my God, Judy Dench fancies me. What am I going to do, you know? <laughs> And, and then a, a ding, you know, and the next thing I knew, I was fancying her like mad. And that's when I realised what it was about being instead of acting. I have some letters in my saddlebag. I'd like to read them. In their first scenes together, Connolly was struck by how easily Judy Dench inhabited the role. As soon as the cameras rolled, she was Queen Victoria. One's a very, very good scene with the letters, because that, that's when it gets established that we may be friends, but she's a boss. You know, because I go, here's a mail to you, and makes me hand them up one at a time. You will hand them to me as I require. Even playing a victim of Alzheimer's disease in Iris, Judy Dench startled director Richard Eyre with her instant switches in and out of character. John Bailey, the husband, reads to her um, a passage from Pride and Prejudice. And she doesn't appear to be assimilating what he's reading. But then she says, I wrote. Mr. Darcy had at first scarcely allowed her to be pretty. I wrote. Yes, my darling, clever cat. You wrote books. Books. I wrote. Judy was telling a joke. She was laughing. Then you hear my voice say, action. And then within four frames, which is one-sixth of a second, she's in character as Iris Murdoch in the latter stages of Alzheimer's disease. And that's just a, a formidable craft skill. Judy 
Lady Dench grew up in York. Her whole family was immersed in the theatre, and her childhood was spent dressing up and performing. John White is a family friend and lifelong member of a local theatre group. He remembers Judy Dench from the 1950s revival of the medieval mystery plays in the ruins of St Mary's Abbey. She was playing the Virgin Mary, I was playing Adam. She was a very young girl, and I mean, one would assume that probably the Virgin Mary was around 14 years of age or whatever when Christ was born, and she filled that absolutely completely. But of course she then had later in the play, which is the challenge, to play Mary the Mother, which calls for a, a mature performance, which she achieved. I mean, there's no doubt about it, she was a very, very good Mary. In York, of course, she can't go wrong. I mean, there's uh, you, Judy Dench walk behind you. She's part of the fabric of this city. But it's the town of Stratford that can lay claim to some of Judy Dench's most unforgettable performances. In 1976, she led the Royal Shakespeare Company as the Queen descends into madness in Trevor Nunn's legendary black magic production of Macbeth. The doors of the theatre would be shut and the audience could hear those doors slamming shut. And it was like, we're in here now. When Judy Dench as Lady Macbeth says, um, come you spirits, unsex me here and fill me from the ground to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. And Judy Dench did it as if there were indeed spirits beneath her feet. Come you spirits, that tend all mortal thoughts. Unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe. Top full of direst cruelty. At one moment, the letterman ju just says, Come on. Um, sleek all your rugged looks. And Judy pl played it as, as an absolutely modern expletive. Come on. Treason's done his worst, nor steel, nor poison. Malice, domestic, foreign, never. Nothing can touch him further. Come on. A gentle, my lord. Sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. I think people coming out of that production would say, Shakespeare didn't write that, did he? And you go to the text and there it is. Come on. Uh, but, but it felt so immediate. In 1997, Broadway audiences queued round the block for Amy's View, directed by Richard Eyre. A rare chance for Americans to hear the most distinctive voice in British theatre. She's always had a, a crack in her voice. It's said that at the old Nottingham Playhouse, they had to put up a a sign uh, front of house saying, um, warning the audience that uh, Miss Dench didn't suffer from laryngitis. And this little idiot starts sulking. She says, oh, come on, it's only TV. Oh, oh, really? oh my God. I mean, you could say anything, but you must never say that. It's, it's, it's a believable noise that she makes. It's not an acting noise. After a while, you think, where am I? Where do I fit in all this? I know Americans think she is immense, they adore her, they, they look upon her as the best actress in the world. Judy Dench is box office gold, having accumulated legions of loyal fans in every medium, from Stratford to the West End, from television sitcoms to James Bond movies, and finally, to Oscar-winning success. It's probably the fewest day's work that she's done on a film in a long time when she did Queen Elizabeth um, in um, Shakespeare in Love. On screen for less than eight minutes, Judy Dench steals her scenes with a stylish Elizabethan wit. Are there no more fireworks? They will be soothing after the excitements of Lady Viola's audience. <laughs> Have her then, but you're a lordly fool. She's been plucked since I saw her last and not by you. It takes a woman to know it.
there's a film audience turning up to see her in All's Well That Ends Well because it's Judy Dench.